Hey, what's up guys? Nick DiMatteo here. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about the top five ground and top five satellite competitors for Starlink. All right, so there are some terms you need to be familiar with first to understand the differences between the value of these companies. If you're already familiar with download and upload speed terminology, you can skip ahead to the juicy competitor comparisons. Otherwise, let me take you on a quick journey of some common terms in the digital universe. First, let's start with ISP. This stands for Internet Service Provider. Basically, who are you paying to receive internet at your house and or your phone? Now, our speeds and data are measured in bits. So, what is a bit and how is it different from a byte? A bit is a tiny unit of data and it's measured as bit rate the number of bits transmitted per second. Bits per second is a measure of data speed. That's how fast you can download or upload something. Bytes are a measure of data volume. That could be the size of a file or storage space. One byte is made up of eight bits. So to convert a value from bits to bytes, just divide by eight. Bits are denoted with a lowercase b while an uppercase B represents a byte. Here we can see some common prefixes of bits and bytes. And the term kilo, or capital K, represents 1,000. That's 1,000 times the amount of bits that you are using. In this case, we're just using one bit. Times 1,000 is one kilobit. If we're using mega, which is most often used when we're talking about download and upload speeds, that would be a megabit. The megabit represents 1 million bits, a capital M with a lowercase b. If we're talking about giga, one gigabit is equal to 1 billion bits. And one terabit is equal to 1 trillion bits. And as you can see in the third column, if we're converting these to bytes, we would just divide by eight for each. And the same thing in reverse in our fourth column. All right, so when we measure download and upload speeds, we do this in megabits per second. But what exactly does download and upload speeds mean? Download speed refers to the rate that digital data is transferred from the internet to your computer. Think downloading files, loading a website, streaming a video, or even music. Upload speed refers to the rate that online data is transferred from your computer to the internet. Think sending emails, sending files to people, live video chats, and even gaming. Now, the more megabits per second, the faster your online activity should be. Some of the fastest download and upload speeds range from 100 to 2,000 megabits per second. Latency, also called ping, refers to the amount of time in milliseconds it takes for data to travel between two locations. Ideally, the lower the latency, the better internet or gaming experience you'll have. Satellite services in general will take a little longer because the distance between the two locations will always be greater than ground service. Bandwidth. This refers to how many bytes travel between two locations during a set time period. Bandwidth is typically measured in megabits per second. Let's quickly discuss some satellite terminology. LEO, or LEO, stands for Low Earth Orbit. Here, satellites are positioned at an altitude between 160 and 1600 kilometers above Earth. MEO, or MEO, stands for medium Earth orbit. Here, satellites operate from 10,000 to 20,000 kilometers above Earth. On a side note, satellites do not operate between LEO and MEO because of the inhospitable environment for electronic components in that area, which is caused by the Van Allen radiation belt. GEO, or GEO, stands for Geostationary Orbit. Here, satellites rotate at the same rate as the Earth along a single line of longitude, 35,786 kilometers above Earth's equator and following the direction of Earth's rotation. Now, it only takes three GEO satellites to provide global coverage, while it takes 20 or more satellites to cover the entire Earth from LEO and 10 or more in MEO. In addition, Communicating with satellites in LEO and MEO requires tracking antennas on the ground to ensure seamless connection between satellites. All right, now that we have a solid base of terminology, on to the top Starlink competitors. Before we jump into the top five ground ISP competitors, let's get some baseline information out of the way. 
The prices for high-speed internet currently range from $70 a month to $299 a month. In addition to that, some cap your data, charge equipment purchase or rental, and have installation fees and contracts. All of the ground ISPs we'll be comparing will be based on the company's fastest upload and download internet plans, plus any other costs associated with the service, like renting or buying the modems, contracts, data caps, etc. They are ranked over the categories of download and upload speeds, latency, cost per month, upfront costs, data caps, availability, and term commitments. And ultimately, who would give Starlink a strong run for their money upon full release? Almost all the Indian, Japanese, European, Asian, African, and South American ISPs are either considerably more expensive or do not provide close to the speeds and data that the states are offering and therefore are not included in the list. Here are the top five ground ISP competitors for Starlink. Number five, Spectrum. The Spectrum Internet Gig Plan starts at $110 a month. The advantages. They have a month-to-month -month option. They have a strong download speed of 940 megabits per second. There's no upfront cost. And they have a wide availability covering 44 states. They're also one of the lowest cost plans of all the ground ISPs. The disadvantages. Their plan caps data at one terabyte. They have a higher latency of 24 milliseconds in comparison to the top ISPs. And finally, they have a weak upload speed of only 35 megabits per second. Number four, Cox. The Cox Gigablast S plan starts at $99.99 a month. The advantages. They have the second fastest download and upload speeds of 1000 megabits per second for each. They have a super low latency of 0.22 milliseconds. They are available in 19 states. The disadvantages. Their plan caps data at 1.25 terabytes with $10 overage charges for every 50 gigabytes. This is one of the more expensive plans out of the bunch. There is an upfront cost of $132. There is a 12 month contract with early termination fees. This could be up to $120. Number three, AT&T. The AT&T Internet 1000 plan starts at $70 per month. The advantages and is the most budget-friendly of the high-speed plans in our ranking. Equipment rental starts at $10 per month, and some promotions include free installation. Their plan does not cap data. They have a strong download and upload speed of 940 megabits per second for each. They have a low latency at 12.3 milliseconds. They are available in 21 states. Disadvantages. They have a required 12-month contract with an early termination fee of up to $180. There's also an upfront cost of installation of $100. Number two, Verizon. For the Verizon Fios Gigabit Connection Plan, expect to spend at least $79.99 a month. The advantages. Their plan does not cap data. They have a strong upper range of download and upload speeds of 880 and 940 megabits per second, respectively. They have a super low latency at 0.12 milliseconds. You can pay month to month, but a contract may offer a discount. The disadvantages. They have a limited availability. They're only available in nine states. There's an upfront cost of installation of $100. And Starlink's biggest ground ISP competitor is number one, Comcast Xfinity. For the Xfinity Gig Pro plan, you can expect to pay at least $299 a month. The advantages, they have the fastest download and upload speeds of 2000 megabits per second for each. This is untouchable at the moment. They have the lowest latency at negative one milliseconds. Again, untouchable. They're also available in 39 states, plus Washington, D.C. Most often, there is no installation fee. The disadvantages. There is a data cap at 1.2 terabytes. This is the most expensive plan of all the providers. There is a 12-month contract with an early termination fee. Here's a detailed breakdown of the top five ground ISP competitors for Starlink. 
Before we jump into the top five satellite competitors, let's get some baseline information out of the way. The prices for high-speed internet currently range from $100 to $165 a month. In addition to that, some have installation fees and contracts. They are ranked over the categories of download and upload speeds, latency, cost per month, upfront costs, data caps, availability, and term commitments. And ultimately, who would give Starlink a strong run for their money upon full release? Some honorable mentions include Iridium and Telesat, who are a little more focused on the commercial side of things by delivering backhaul and Internet of Things connectivity. Here are the top five satellite ISP competitors for Starlink. Number five, Amazon's Project Kuiper. Kuiper Systems LLS is a subsidiary of Amazon and was started in 2019. Project Kuiper, as it's become known, is an initiative to build a low Earth orbit, or LEO, satellite constellation capable of providing reliable, affordable broadband service to unserved and underserved communities around the world. July 30th, 2020, Amazon received notice from the FCC to deploy and operate a constellation of 3,236 satellites. They will be required to launch half their satellites by 2026 and the rest by 2029. Including Amazon's own Blue Origin rockets, they are open to launching on all available rockets. Amazon's Senior Vice President of Devices and Services, David Limp, noted that he doesn't believe Project Kuiper is in direct competition with SpaceX's Starlink, since there is such a broad addressable market when it comes to connectivity for unserved and underserved customers globally. This I personally do not believe, as they will be offering the same exact service to the same exact demographics. Basically everyone. For Project Kuiper's projected plan, you can expect to pay around $139 a month. There is currently no information on installation or commitment requirements. The advantages. Backed by Amazon with access to deep pockets for funding and name recognition. They have access to use Amazon's Blue Origin to launch satellites. They have the rights to deploy and operate over 3,000 LEO satellites. And they are using LEO satellites. The disadvantages have only been in business for two years. They only have a six year window to deploy half of their approved satellites. They currently do not have any satellites in orbit for testing or transmitting. And they have a higher projected cost per month for service. Number four, SES's O3B M Power Satellites. A Luxembourgish satellite and terrestrial telecommunications network provider supplying video and data connectivity worldwide to broadcasters, content and internet service providers, mobile and fixed network operators, governments and institutions. It currently has 20 satellites and is now moving to an updated version of O3B M Power satellites. The 11 new O3B M Power MEO satellite constellation and the SES 17HTS Geo satellite are set to deploy in 2021. Network services will range from 50 megabits per second to multiple gigabits. There is currently no information on the cost of the service, as this is primarily slated to hit institutions and internet service providers. The advantages. Supports 15 million end users. Supports four out of the top six oil and gas super majors supports four of the top five cruise lines, has seven years experience. The disadvantages. Using MEO, which has a higher latency at 150 milliseconds, a network of satellites for use in broadband internet isn't deployed yet. Not making or launching their own satellites, which could keep their costs higher. Delivering subpar download and upload speeds in comparison to Starlink. Number three, OneWeb. OneWeb is a global communications network powered from space, headquartered in London, enabling connectivity for governments, businesses, and communities. It is implementing a constellation of low Earth orbit satellites with a network of global gateway stations and a range of user terminals to provide an affordable, fast, high bandwidth, and low latency communication service connected to the future and a pathway to 5G for everyone, everywhere. 
OneWeb Satellites, OneWeb's joint venture with Airbus, is responsible for manufacturing the satellites and is ramping up the pace of production and execution to meet the upcoming launch schedule. The plan is to have a 650 satellite constellation. Now it started as Worldview in 2012 and changed their name to OneWeb in 2015. Initial investors were Qualcomm and Virgin Group. SoftBank invested $1 billion in 2016 and then pulled back a lot of its committed funding during the start of the pandemic. The company then filed for Chapter 11 in March 2020 and was then purchased by the British government and Bharti Global, the owner of Indian telecom giant Bharti Airtel, for $1 billion. Each have a 45% stake, while SoftBank investors keep 10%. There is currently no information on the cost of the service. The advantages. They have already deployed 110 LEO satellites. They have a low latency of 20 to 40 milliseconds. Download speeds of 50 to 150 megabits per second. And upload speeds of 25 megabits per second. They have eight years experience. Last month, the FCC granted OneWeb licenses to access the U.S. market for low-Earth orbit broadband satellite services. The disadvantages. The delays from a Chapter 11 restructuring of the company. It is susceptible to poor weather outages, just like every other service. It's using a third party to launch and build satellites. It's not offering any usable internet service yet. And it's paying Hughes for ground system development and construction. Number two, Viasat's Viasat Internet. Viasat is a global communications company that believes everyone and everything in the world can be connected. For more than 30 years, Viasat has helped shape how consumers, businesses, governments, and militaries around the world communicate. Today, the company is developing the ultimate global communications network to power high quality, secure, affordable, fast connections to impact people's lives anywhere they are, on the ground, in the air or at sea. They're also developing an antenna for the O3B M power satellites. Viasat Internet, formerly Exceed, is a high-speed internet beamed directly to your home from their satellites in space. This means you can get a fast internet connection where you live almost anywhere in the United States. For their fastest internet access, you'll be set back $160 a month for up to 300 gigabytes of service. The advantages. Offering up to one terabit of capacity for customers. Full coverage of the globe. They have 30 years of experience. They have download speeds of up to 100 megabits per second. There is no data cap. The disadvantages. They use three geostationary satellites, which have a higher latency of 643 milliseconds. They have upload speeds up to 3 megabits per second. It's susceptible to poor weather outages just like every other service. You're unable to buy the equipment for the service. You must lease it at $10 a month or pay $299 for the life of the lease. Although there's no data cap, after 300 gigabytes, your data will lose priority to those who share the service in your area. They're using a third party to build and launch satellites, which could keep their costs higher. It's really expensive for the service you're receiving. And Starlink's biggest satellite ISP competitor is... Number one, Echo Stars Hughes. Hughes is the global leader in satellite broadband for home and office, delivering innovative solutions and a comprehensive suite of Hughes on managed services for enterprises and governments worldwide. High-speed internet access, credit debit transactions, inventory control, distance learning, digital signage, voice over IP, and access to the cloud are just a few of the many applications of Hughes broadband technology. For their fastest internet access, you'll be set back a cool $165 a month for up to 50 gigabytes of service. The advantages. The largest service of its kind with more than 1.3 million subscribers in the Americas. Coverage is available in the US, Mexico, most of Canada, and major parts of Central and South America. There are no data caps or overage charges. They have 24 years of experience. 
They have name recognition. They have no new satellites needed for their current service. The disadvantages. They are limited to the Americas. It's susceptible to poor weather outages just like every other service. They're currently using two geostationary satellites which have a higher latency of 728 milliseconds. Although there's no data cap, after 50 gigabytes, your data will be buffered down to 1 to 3 megabits per second. This needs a large ground infrastructure. The download speed of 30 megabits per second is the slowest in the market. Their upload speed of 3 megabits per second is also the slowest in the market. And finally, they're the most expensive in the market. Here's the breakdown of the top 5 satellite ISP competitors for Starlink. Finally, let's talk about SpaceX's Starlink and its specs. The setup is as easy as pointing it to the sky and plugging it in. You may need to bolt it to something like the roof of your house, RV, or boat, but either way it's the smallest and easiest to install of all the competitors. Currently, the coverage targets the northern United States and Canada, and it is expected to have near-global coverage of the populated world by the end of 2021. The service is currently called Better Than Nothing Beta, and costs $99 a month with an upfront $499 for the starter kit with the necessary equipment. According to Musk, Canada and Norway should be the first countries after the US to receive Starlink access as early as February 2021. And India access may come around the middle of 2021. Let's take a look at the advantages and disadvantages of Starlink using its current beta version stats. The advantages. It's already operating a better than nothing beta with current coverage of Canada and the northern US. They are building their own satellites. They are launching their own satellites. They already have the most satellites, roughly 900, in low Earth orbit. They are continually updating their beta version. Ground infrastructure is less expensive to deploy as their equipment is much smaller and much more cost effective. They have the fastest LEO download and upload speeds. They have the lowest latency among satellite providers. They currently beat the prices of those already in service. Building and launching satellites at a much faster rate at a much cheaper cost than their competitors. Their goal is for global coverage. They're the only satellite broadband provider to receive US grants to enhance or provide service to underserved locations. They're backed by a successful entrepreneur with the vision and engineering experience to assist in all levels of R&D, production, launch, maintenance, improvements, and service. Because they're part of a bigger mission to become a multi-planetary species, this may drive higher adoption rates. Globally, the cost will be cheaper with comparable if not faster speeds and provide more data than current ground ISPs. They have thousands of base stations worldwide. They can be an internet solution no matter where you go in the world. The disadvantages. They do not have the consumer and commercial relationships built that some of the other big players have. They only have five years of experience. It is susceptible to poor weather outages just like every other service. The upfront cost of $499 is a big barrier to entry for some. They currently have limited coverage. You need a clear view of the sky. You may not be able to put up the dish in cities or if you're renting. Bandwidth will be compromised in highly populated cities. Let's take a look at the comparisons between the ground and the satellite ISPs with Starlink's information. All in all, when this service is up and running based on its current beta version data, it outperforms them all based on a combined cost, performance, coverage, ease of installation, and reliability. How will this disruption of technology delivered to the masses disrupt our current internet service providers? How will it disrupt the investments into terrestrial infrastructure? Who will benefit from the whole world being connected? From a valuation standpoint, how much would Starlink be worth if it can deliver the same or better speed and quality of broadband to the world? Do you like our list? Do you agree with our assessments? 
please let us know in the comments section below and please remember to like, subscribe, and share this video with your friends. Click one of these videos to watch more or click the notification button to be notified of our new videos. Thank you for watching.